So now that we've been working a bit with Python, what we're going to be doing now is working with Jython. It's an implementation of Python that's used inside of Fiji for image analysis. Um, the reason we're going to use this Jython scripting language is because it incorporates a lot of the same syntax as Python. So once you get proficient at the syntax of Python, you can use Jython. And the reason we're going to be implementing it in Fiji is because within Fiji, we have the ability to record macros, which we can then uh, incorporate into our Jython script, making our life a lot easier once we know some Python, uh, to then write some more complicated uh, scripts for Fiji using Jython and the built-in plugins. Now, a lot of the rest of this course, you're going to be learning how to do things without Fiji at all, just straight up in Python. That's completely fine, and we recommend that. But sometimes there's a script that you might already have, or there's something that's really well implemented in Fiji that you don't want to work with in something else, and so you can just write it quickly in Jython using the syntax from Python that you'll be learning here uh, in Fiji in the scripting language there. So what we're going to go ahead now is write a Jython script using the macro builder at first to figure out what we want to do and write this Jython script to find the average size of the cells that we made in the simulated image that we just did. So on that note, I'm going to move myself out of the way. All right, so let's get started on detecting how many cells we have and their sizes. So first thing we want to do is under the uh, plugins, macros, we're going to go to record. This is going to help us record uh, what exactly we're doing with the macro. So this is going to give us uh, these uh, syntax that we're going to be using in our Jython script. So first thing we're going to do is open up the image that we had, uh, we saved in our last section, random circles tiff. Make that a little bit smaller. And you can see imp, which is what we call an image um, in Fiji, is ij for imagej.openImage, image, and then this is just the path to the image. We work on that in a little bit more. All right, so we have this image. It's RGB. So we can try to. See, set measurements, we want the area, min max gray value, sure. And if I try to run that, analyze particles, we have to first make this a 8-bit image or color threshold. So, let's, that didn't work, so I can just delete that out of the record. Let's go back, image type, 8-bit. So, ij.run, imp, so it's taking this variable here, imp, putting it into the function run, so ij.run imp, and it's just launching 8-bit on it. All right, so now we can set the measurements we want, area, min, max, gray value. Okay, so ij.run, set measurement, so it's just running that function right out of Fiji. And now, let's see, we can analyze particles. Let's see, display results, okay. Now, one thing I, I notice is that its area is very small, 0.165. So that's because if I go up into here, properties, my pixel width is listed at 0 0.01 inch. So what I can do is turn this pixel width to one and one for one pixel and okay. Let's see. And let's close this. I don't want to save it. Process, analyze particles again. Display results. And up. Oh, now we're in the number of pixels that are covered by a single circle. And this number, 1649 for a circle, this is in the range that remember we. Uh, we saw, I think it was like 1700-ish, in the first lesson of one circle that was covered for, um, how many pixels were covered by one circle. So that's about in the right range. So we know that we're doing it pretty well. So you can write a Python script for Fiji in any text editor, Python editor. But within Fiji, there is a script editor. And 
here it is. Let's resize this a little bit, make our life easier. So let's take a look at what we need. Well, to start off with, first thing I'm going to do is go up to here, language, and we're going to call this, well, Python, because that's what we're programming in. Then we can save this as, let's see, um, cell detector demo. So the first things that we need are to import some libraries. So from ij, import ij, from ij.io, we're going to import the file saver, ij.io, import open dialog, and import os. The reason we're importing these is so we can save the files. This is the method for saving files, and open dialog. Why do I want the open dialog? Because I'm going to give you some quick code that makes your life a bit easier. Oh. So I did a run clear results. This just clears the results table uh, so that at the beginning of every operation, the results table is cleared out. Um, OD is open dialog. And then we're gonna just write in here, choose a file name. I can write anything in here. I can say, please choose the file. I could say, choose a file or whatever you wanna put in that title bar. And then this is gonna be file name. It's just OD, get file name. That gets the file name od.git directory gets the directory, and od.git's path equals gets the whole path. So if I run that now, what's going to happen? You see the results cleared, and I get a dialog box that I can choose a file from. And that is all that happened. So I can check, right, rerun that. Should give me here's the path. C users. This is my login name, desktop. Python random circles .tiff. What happens if I just print the file name? We just get random circles .tiff. And if I print the directory. we get the directory that it was written in. Now this could be useful because later on we might want to use this directory to save uh, our data in. So now we can start editing this code a bit. So we can open up an image. So here we see that imp, this is what we're going to call our image, is ij.openImage. And if you look at this, this is just our path, right? So I can copy this over ij dot open image that should that is a path so I'll, instead of that I can just write path here and if I want to show that image I can just do imp dot show let's see if this works circles tiff there we go perfect you see that it is still running over here the recorder. So after imp.show, well, the next thing we did after we opened the image is we turned that imp into 8-bit. So I just plug that right in here. Turn image into 8-bit. And after that, we set our measurements and we ran analyzed particles. Set measurements. Articles. And you'll notice that in this case, we have used uh, the American spelling of analyze. That's actually really important. There's another analyze particles function in Fiji, if you use the British spelling, that does something completely different. I don't know why. Now, let's see, what did we make a mistake of here? That's going to open that up with the wrong. Uh, size, and so I can, pixel size rather, 
And so we can change this to change the pixel size so that our measurements are in the right units. And let's close this window and test it. Randomcircles.tiff. And we get our measurements out over here. So I just quickly resize the window. And I realized that we never saved any of these results. And so we don't know how to call save yet from the macro recorder. Just go file, save as, results.cfa, this is actually results biology, we'll call it, replace what was there, yes, and now we see ij it save as results, and then it's a path to where we want to save it to, this ij it save results. So after we do this, we can, let's see, copy and paste this. But I don't want to necessarily have it being saved into C colon users, phallus T, desktop, bat Python, results biology every single time. Um, I might be running the script from something else. I might not have these folders on my computer. You probably don't have the same username as me. So how can we get around that? Well, we already know from here when we did print directory that we have a directory. So we can make a string, save. And we can just save into the directory that we pulled the file from. So save string is going to be directory plus, this is a string concatenation like we've learned earlier in the prerequisites, results. Oh, let's spell that correctly. Results, mm, uh, sample, tiff, or random, random circles. There we go. Random circles. And then time dot tiff or csv because it's going to be a csv file and now I can just say instead of results come out this path results save string and let's close this out make sure that we're not doing anything in the background try it again make sure that everything is working Of random circles. Okay. And if I pull that folder up, bear with me for just a second to make sure I've got it someplace right here. Bat Python. Let's see, random circles. Corona time. Open with notepad. Just get a quick look. And 1649, 1185, 657, 85. So everything's right there. So area, min, max, and cell number one through 20. It's pretty good. So sometimes in um, Jython, some functions don't work as well as we'd expect, or some plugins don't work as well as we expect. Often you can read uh, some documentation, image.sc, the image forms, uh, or just the API for VG, but all of that's really far in depth. One of those things is uh, thresholding. The auto threshold function doesn't work as well as it should when you're calling it from Jython. So what we can do is from Fiji import threshold, import auto threshold, or Fiji.threshold, import auto threshold, and there's the function, and I just pulled this from this website, so you're welcome to look, Googling is our friend. So hist, it's just an imp, so we're calling it on our image, our image itself, the IMP, just git processor, which is a, image j2 feet, uh, processor on each image and then just getting histogram so we're getting the histogram from our image and then we're just going to call auto threshold on that histogram that's going to give us our low threshold and then we can just use imp that get processor and then we can threshold on this low threshold so this is the jython code to do it it looks vaguely familiar to java as well because fiji is originally written in java so if you want to do thresholding, which you might want to be doing um, for our practical, this is the syntax to do it. Now, for the practical that I'd like you to try, what you're going to do is let's see, open, work on these cells. These are simulated cells. And you can see that there's lots of them in there. And you're going to try to work 
on a pipeline that'll give you results table similar to what we just had uh, for these cells. Um, here's some sample code that I writ wrote, rather, it'll be in the folder for this program um, that you can use to try to figure this out. There's such things like water shedding you might want to try. Um, you might need to flip the image. You're going to want to deal with the fact that it's an RGB image. And just see what you can work out as your practical. Um, this is more or less the code that I have for it. And lots of people will get lots of different answers. That's fine. There's different ways of doing